my life became a living hell after my father died during the car accident. I was heartbroken and felt that I had no reason to be alive. I decided to move on in life and never think about my past. I had a stepmother and a stepsister. We all live in a small house. Hello ladies and gentlemen. My name is Doris. This story is all about how my life changed from being a slave girl to be a manager for a company. Thanks you. Few weeks after my dad burial, I went to the cemetery to pay a visit. On my way back home, I meet my classmate on the way. We stop by and spoke to each other. I am very sorry for the death of your father. May God comfort you and bring you happiness again. Thank Mary. It was nice talking with you. Goodbye. Goodbye Doris. After the discussion, I walked back to my house. I entered the house and I saw my stepmother sitting in a chair. She doesn't look happy. I wonder what have happened to her. I thought for a while and I said, "Hi mom. What got you so worry? Is everything okay?" Your days of happiness is over in this house. What do you mean by that? From now on, you are responsible to do all the housework. My daughter and I should be treated like a queen and a princess. There is no room of peace for you in this house. You are a slave now, and your father is not here to save you. I am so happy that your father died in a car accident. Mom, why do you dislike me? I dislike you because you are beautiful than my daughter. What have I done to you to be treated like this? You stupid girl. I don't have time to explain all this. Go and prepare me some food to eat. I am hungry. Okay, mom. It pains me after my stepmother said those horrible words to me. I couldn't help myself out of this problem because I didn't have anyone to run to. My life became a hell after my father died. I decided to live by their rules and regulations and also I knew that for whatsoever way I was treated was to make me strong in society. I stopped crying and became to prepare the food my stepmother requested for. After a while, my stepsister by the name of Mercy came into the kitchen. She said, "Doris, hurry up. I am starving. I feel they my stomach is about to explore. Mercy, the food will soon be ready." Okay, but you need to hurry up. I am hungry. Okay, sister. How did you call me? I called you my sister. From now on, I am no longer your sister, and a slave can't be my sister. What will you do about that? I will continue to call you my sister. I will tell mom to beat the hell out of you. Please don't do that. I will never call you my sister again. I promise. That good. Excuse me, slave. My life was full of pains and sorrow. My stepmother and her daughter treated me like a slave, moreover, like a dog. They called me all kinds of names and beat on me for no reason. I missed my dad from the day he died. I hope he was here to save me. I was a child who loved education, and I knew that education was the only key that could save me. I put in more time to study my lesson and stay away from boyfriends at my early age. One day, I was put out of school for school fees. I walked back home to inform my stepmother, and I said, "Mom, I was put out of school. My school fees wasn't pay." "Okay, what do you want me to do about it?" "I need you to pay my school fees." "Where is your sister?" Was she put out of school? She is at school. But why? I am the only one put out for school feeds. Dad give you my school feeds before he could died, right? Yes, he did. But I used the money for my personal purpose. I rather throw my money away than to pay your school feeds. I am so happy that you were out of school. You will now become liability to society. You stupid girl. <laughs> Now go into the kitchen and prepare some food. I want to eat. I didn't complain. I went into the kitchen and prepare the food she requested for. 
Later that night I couldn't sleep. I worry on how my school feeds could be pay. And later an idea pop into my head. I will try to write a storybook. After I am done, I am going to post it on all social media. Maybe someone will try to support me. May God be with me. I quickly ran to the computer and started to write my story. I wrote my book for whole day long. After I got through writing, I published my story on all social media platform. Few days later, my story was the talk of the town. Later that evening, L received a phone call. Hello. Hello, is this Doris Dixon? Yes, I am. I am calling from the Ministry of Education. We have read your book, and we will like support you in your education. Come tomorrow at the Ministry of Education. We need to ask you some questions. Thanks you, sir. The time is 5 o'clock p.m. Don't be late. I will be there by tomorrow morning. And have a good day. Yes. Thanks, God. I will be able to go back to school again. The following morning, I woke up from bed, and I took bath. I went in the living room to talk with Mom. Mom, I am going to the Ministry of Education. What for? A worker from the minister called me, and said, they want to ask me a question. Why will they want to ask you a question? Is because, I wrote a story, and posted it on social media. They love it, and want to support me in my education. How dare you wrote a book, without my concern? Mom, I need the money to pay my school feeds. Do you think, that writing a story, will help you pay your school feeds? Yes mom, it will. There is no way that you, are leaving this house. Mom please, I need the money to pay my school feeds. I said, you are not leaving this house. I am going to do everything possible, that you don't go to school anymore. Now go into your room, before I beat the hell out of you. <laughs> you are such a wicked stepmother. Now I realized, how wicked my stepmother was. I was helpless and couldn't do anything about it. I try calling the minister, but his phone was unreachable. I sat in my room crying all day. Later that evening, mom told my stepsister, about all what we have discussed. She said, why mom? Why should I do that? Because if your sister goes back to school, she will become successful in life. And I don't want that to happen. Okay mom, you are such a clever mother. I love your plans. I will do just like you told me. I am going to get dressed. My stepsister Mercy, was just like her evil mother. She also agreed to her mother plans. She got dressed, and head over to the minister place. Hello sir. Hello, are you Doris Dixon? Yes, I am Doris Dixon. We have read your story, and we willing to support you. The ministry have agreed, to pay your school fees. Do you understand me? Yes sir, I understood you well. Excuse me, I need to answer this phone call. Hello, to whom am I speaking with? Hello sir. I am Doris Dixon. Doris, Dixon? How can that be possible? Sir, the one you see before you, is not the person she claims to be. Are you telling the truth? My mom locked me inside, and decided to send my stepsister, to pretend to be me. How can I believe you? Ask her for the title of the book. Okay, I will. Goodbye sir. Goodbye. I am sorry for that. Can I ask you a question? Show you can. Are you the author of this story? Yes I am the author of the story. What is the title of the story, you have written? My sister sat there, thinking for an hour, but yet, she couldn't say, the tile of the book. The minister now know that, she wasn't the person, she claims to be. He called the police, and she was arrested. Later that evening, the minister called me. Doors, 
We have paid your school fees. You can now go back to school. Learn to be a good student and make us proud. Thanks for all you have done for me. Sir, when will you set my sister out of prison? Your sister will be out of prison by tomorrow. Doors, goodbye. Goodbye, sir. My life took a new turn from the story I wrote. I was now back in school, and all my friends missed me for the days I was absent. There was nothing my stepmother and her daughter could do about it. I was happy, and also grateful, to be back in school, again. One month later, my sister and I graduated from university. I was so proud to be a university graduate. I wish that my father was alive, to celebrate this wonderful day with me. A week later, a company my dad worked for, needed a suitable, and capable, person to replace him. They send a messenger to our house. The company will be a, person to take your husband's place. You can select any of your daughters. She will need to write the test, if she passes the test. She will be the new manager of the company. Okay sir, thanks for the information. I knew that, there is no way, mom could choose me over her daughter. So, I pray that my stepsister, will be successful in the test. The next day Mercy went to the company. She was given the test to write. She wrote the test, and came back home. How was the test, my lovely daughter? Will you pass the test, and become the new manager of the company? Mom, the test was fine, and I will make a pass. That's great my daughter. You need to take a rest. Go into your room, and have a sleep. Okay mom. The next day, mom received a phone call from the company. I am very sorry to say this. Your daughter didn't make a pass in the test. Okay mister. Where is Doris Dixon? She must give the test a try. Doris Dixon is dead. She died alone with her dad in the car accident. Okay, have a good day. I must return to the company. Goodbye. After I heard that, I asked mom if I could give the test a try. Mom, can I give the test a try? Why should I allow you take the test? You are a slave, and slave don't write test. Mom, I am part of this family. I have the full right, to write the test. You are a slave, and you are not a member of this family. Mom, you have treated me, in such a horrible manner. I am going to write the test, and I don't need your permission anymore. You are such a wicked, horrible, and a heartless mother. Goodbye. This girl is getting out of hands, I should have killed her, just like the way I killed her dad. I got in a taxi, and drove to the company. I explained that I was part of a family. And the manager said, Okay, we did a DNA test and it proves that you are Mr. Dixon biological daughter. We will allow you write the test. I wrote the test, and later I went back home. Mom said I shouldn't enter the house because I disrespected her. I didn't have anywhere else to go. I ended sleeping on the street. The test results came out, and I was successful. Mom couldn't believe it. I was now the new manager of the company. The company bought me a car and house. I didn't have to live with mom anymore. I was so proud. The next day, I was called to give a speech. Everyone rather there, except for mom and her daughter. watching this video and please remember one thing in this life forever successful man there is a painful story i hope you like our new episode please subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications to never missed a new video from us thanks you and have a good day